All right, people are losing their minds about waves today. And uh, some people really hate what I have to say, so let's repeat my opinion. <laughs> If you don't know, I posted a business analysis. It's not really this sort of like opinion where I'm taking this hard stance. It's more of a column where I have an opinion on it and I have a perspective, which is interesting to me because I like to analyze business and I like to analyze marketing and how people are running their own entrepreneurial ventures. As you maybe know, that I am a venture advisor at the McGuire Center for Entrepreneurship at the University of Arizona, as well as the founder and operator owner of Audio Issues. I th maybe have a different perspective than just the home studio musician, bedroom producer that wants to keep the plugins as is and doesn't want Waves to, to fuck with anything that they're working on, even though they technically have every right to tweak their business model as they see fit. Now, that might not be great for them because as we know, many companies have gone under when they've made poor business decisions that affected their customers negatively, but time will tell. We interrupt our regularly scheduled programming because time will tell and time has told indeed. It seems like it only takes about 24 hours of audio forums going absolutely fucking bonkers for waves to backtrack their opinion. Now, that doesn't necessarily change my fun business model analysis point of view, so I'm gonna let the rest of the video run anyway. But I am very glad that things have changed and they have backtracked, especially when it comes to the standalone licenses that people have had and wanted to keep without things getting deleted off of their systems and things of that nature. Those were all very legitimate criticisms that I'm glad Waves has seen the error of their ways and listened to their customers. All right, and let's get back to it. But I wanted to walk through some of my thought process here because when you have an opinion on something, you immediately find the people that agree with you and the people that fucking hate your guts. Everybody hates me on the internet. Everybody. What? I hate homeless people now? And those people are actually entertaining because I try not to make fun of them too much, but they often have very good points. And I will be fair and say that some of the things that they did mention, I did not realize like how Waves probably alienated a huge chunk of their customers just by how they rolled out their stuff or their new plan. They could have probably made a lot of money if they had notified their audience and told them that this was maybe the last chance to get the latest plugin and then everybody that did not want a subscription would have jumped to the update plan. That may be a lost opportunity for Waves to have made some money beforehand. Or maybe it's a crazy risky stunt to get an incredible amount of PR. However, I also like to think that maybe I don't know what a giant multi-million dollar company knows and the decisions that they are making. Now, those decisions may not be the right ones, but my opinion might not be right either. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people's opinions in the comment sections are also very wrong. But let's discuss my thought process here. If you've read the post down below on Facebook and you can see it there in, in its entirety and also read all through all the great comments that I've mostly not moderated and just left be. Only when people veered into personal attacks. I've been called many names online, many of them real bad, but none as offensive as a Facebook moderator. Come on, do better. Find a better slur for me. I'm foreign. I speak funny. There's ample opportunity to make fun of me here. Anyway, it's an unpopular opinion, but I think Waves is making an interesting and fairly sound business decision as much as the online forums and the armchair audio engineers want to bitch about it online. Let's put it, let's put these numbers into sort of a, a case study, a business analysis if I were to talk about this in entrepreneurship class. First of all, let's remember the fact that Waves is a company and its purpose is to make money. They do so by creating pretty great plugins. They've been around for a really long time. 
they get a lot of flack. There's a whole camp that hates waves and everything they stand for and say that they're bad, they sound terrible, blah, blah, blah. None of that is really true. That's just those people's opinions because they can't stand waves for some reason. The reasons don't matter, but they actually are great plugins. Many of them are used all the time by some of the most successful audio engineers and producers of all time. And some of those same audio engineers have signature plugins that many of us really love using. My, some of my favorite Waves plugins, for instance, are the Omni Channel, not because it's a Waves plugin, because it's from Andrew Sheps. It's a, the Andrew Sheps Omni Channel. And I like Andrew Sheps. He's one of my favorite audio engineers, not necessarily because of his audio, not that his audio production isn't amazing, but because of he, who he is as a person. He always comes off as a truly authentic, caring, warm, honest, and an amazing human being that I would love to sit down and have coffee with. So it seems like my uh, brain is broken because I actually have interviewed Andrew Sheps. It was probably close to a decade ago when we spoke at the Potluck Audio Conference in Tucson, Arizona. So if you'd like to take a listen to that interview, check out the link in the description below. And that's why I like the Omni Channel not necessarily because it was waves. Any other plugin company could have made an Andrew Sheps plugin and I would have gravitated towards that. However, Andrew Sheps fanboyisms aside, let's think about this for a minute when it comes to a business perspective. Waves is not in the business of just helping you make music. They have to make money in order to be able to help you make music. Now your dope SoundCloud upload might be great, but it when you are a, a big, plugin company or a big company in any industry, you aren't necessarily only thinking about the customer. Obviously the customer is first and foremost, that's how you get your revenue, but you also have to be able to pay salaries, software development, product development, all of the things that go into running a company, right? And so in the past, as you undoubtedly know, they've been running a discounted plugin sale model. I don't know a single person who has paid full price for a Waves plugin. I have probably paid the discounted price for all of my Waves plugins, I or gotten them for free even, because they have such an amazing variety and a huge bundle of plugins that they can do this sort of discount sales promotion merry-go-round that they're stuck on because they started discounting their plugins and therefore they have to keep discounting their plugins in order for people to buy them because their customer base is actually used to getting a discount and therefore will not really pay full price. And I wouldn't be surprised if Waves was actually sick of this and wanted something different, wanted something a little more reliable, wanted something they could make better strategic decisions on other than just being like, all right, hello boardroom, what should we do? What discount should we run next? And that's their entire business model. But the discount model did sell a lot of plugins and that's just how they came to be the juggernaut that they are. But let's run the numbers on the buy plugins outright versus the plugin subscription. From their point of view, we know how the audio industry or the musicians in their home studios feel, they don't like it. Actually, that's not true. Some of them really hate it and they are very vocal and a lot of people just don't give a shit. And it's actually really funny how the sort of laissez-faire majority actually that just goes about their business, doesn't care and doesn't actually speak out because they don't care enough about it. They just go about their day focusing on other things than being outraged on the internet. So let's talk about the business model. On one side, we have the discount shopper. You buy your plugin and you get it forever business model. You could probably get most of their plugins for $29 at one point during the year if you were really good at monitoring their sales. And so let's assume that I am I'm a, I'm a musician. I'll buy five $29 plugins throughout my lifetime. It's probably higher, but for the sake of ease here and let's assume that the total customer base for waves is about a million customers now i don't know if that's a lot or little that can be conservative or that can be like totally off base but for the sake of just making the math work for argument's sake let's say a million customers a million customers buy 
five plugins at $29 a piece, which gives us $145 million in revenue. Okay. They are tired of the discount model. Maybe they want to do something new. They maybe even, and I'm obviously making grand assumptions here, but they might be having problems. Maybe they're running on debt. Maybe they don't actually have a way to sustain the discount promotions forever and need something new in order to just stay afloat. Now that's all pure speculation. If you buy a plugin for $29 and expect updates and all that for free, which they actually they don't offer, you have to buy the new plugin. So they do have some sort of recurring revenue anyway built in, which is interesting because the people that are the most outraged don't actually realize that they did have a subscription model in a way beforehand. Hmm? However, let's say that they don't want to do the discount shopper model anymore and they want to go over to subscription following some of the plugin companies that are already doing that and some plugin companies that may go there eventually, right? However, they rolled out this plan disastrously. They pissed off a lot of their consumers. People hate them. Not everybody, of course, but people don't like this. So let's assume that they had a million customers and 500,000 of them. That's a lot of people. That's almost twice the population of Iceland, by the way. But let's assume that 500,000 just so go fuck yourself. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to go over to Plugin Alliance or I'm going to do Slate or I'm going to just go find the best free plugins online and use those because guess what? Waves is not a requirement for a hit record. I don't know why I have to tell you that, but you can actually make amazing music with the limited equipment that does not cost a lot. Tangent aside, so 500,000 customers, they still have that will begrudgingly go to the subscription model. Now they have two subscription models as far as I saw on there. It's just a quick glance on their website. They have the $14.99 a month and the $24.99 a month. I know a lot about how pricing structure works, how people work when it comes to price psychology, just based on my research and work with entrepreneurship and a business mentorship and things of that nature. It's not going to go 50, 50, 50% 50 of them are not going to do the $14.99 and 50% of them are going to do $24.99. People are more likely to get the cheaper option. So let's assume that 70% of the remaining customers pay $14.99 and the rest pay $24.99. So the average subscription price, because when you are running big numbers in financial plans and trying to do a pro forma financial analysis and statements of that nature in order to do strategic decisions for your business, you have to actually think in big numbers, not just in one customer at a time. Although those do tend to go together in a certain way, but we'll, we'll talk about that later or never. That means the average subscription is about $17.99 a month, right? So 500,000 customers paying the average price of $17.99 a month gives us $8,995,990 in revenue per month. That's recurring revenue, MRR, monthly recurring revenue that Waves is going to be generating every month. And let's assume that they never get another customer again because they <coughs> shot themselves in the foot so badly, they're going to be limping forever and they'll never get back to the standard they once were. They'll never recoup their reputation in any way, which is very unlikely. But let's assume the worst for them and say that's all they get, 500,000 customers forever that nobody else will ever buy another waves plugin that still means that they get almost nine million dollars in revenue every month and they'll start making the same amount of money which is 145 million dollars in total revenue based on our previous math they will make the same amount of money in only 16 months and for a business 16 months is not a long period of time so from an mrr perspective it does make sense to them although it might piss off some of their customers which is a business decision you might have to make at some point if you are running that sort of company but i get it subscription fatigue 
is exhausting. The amount of stuff that we're paying month after month can, can get tiring and it hurts our wallets, right? But that isn't, unfortunately, as harsh as it might sound, is not actually Waves' problem. It is a personal responsibility for me and you and everyone else to actually make strategic decisions for ourselves that help us get closer to the goals that we are trying to achieve. I would argue that you probably don't need all the subscriptions that are eating away at your bank account every month. So maybe this is the time for you to take five minutes to look over your statement and see what you can cut back on because you don't necessarily need all that. But at the end of the day, I'm a hopeless romantic and very optimistic about this. I have hopes for waves because I, and this is not actually paid by waves in any way. Actually, I should get paid for this now that I think of it. But anyway, but I am optimistic about it because I hope that this gives them a reason to put that money into development, creating better plugins, more plugins, new things. It allows them to take better risks that are more calculated, more strategic. It allows them to be more creative with some of the funds they have. And that hopefully, if I'm not wrong, and I'm willing to admit that I'm wrong about this because I'm, this is not a hill that I really care about dying on, but I am hoping that this will be a net benefit in the long run for Waves customers and music producers, musicians and audio engineers that are trying to make an impact with their music, producing music and making creative art that they love to put out there for the world to hear. Anyway, I maybe love to hear what you think. I actually had a really great time reading the Facebook comments and commenting and replying to some of them. And so feel free to, to leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Try to be civil. Don't just be a troll under a bridge. We, we tend to drag trolls out in Iceland into the sun where they turn to stone. And when you're petrified, nobody can hear you scream. So those are my thoughts on waves. Don't have a horse in the race, but I do love the Auerbox though.